I have begun to accept that some things about my town just aren't normal. I've seen things. Things in the woods. Things on a regular residential block. Things that just aren't square with my comprehension of reality. My friend Sonny isn't normal either. I'm not really sure he's my friend to be honest. But I just had this feeling. You know that feeling that dogs you and itches you and crawls all over your brain that he knew more than he was letting on. Especially after he tried to cure my chronic unemployment by sending me to a particular factory with some nasty, beyond nasty health code violations. Anyway, so it was early morning and I hadn't slept, at all. I had recently injured my finger in the aforementioned job, that didn't pan out and it hurt like hell. The pain kept me awake though, which in my questionable sound opinion was a good thing. Couldn't go home, couldn't sleep, had to see Sonny. He lived a couple streets over. The kind of guy who it's easy to be on and off friends with. You kind of forget about them until you don't. That makes me sound like a pretty garbage human, and hell, maybe I am. According to my family, I can't do anything right. It wasn't like that, really, though. Sonny and I, we hung out sometimes, and sometimes... For long times, we didn't. He had no family that I knew of and lived in a house by himself. This creaky old town left over with a sway-backed roof and faded pink paint. The kind of pink that doesn't look frilly, just old and secretive. The house was a bit of a Frankenstein too. Awkward bits and junctures seemingly added at random so that it looked like an electrocuted junkyard splayed out by itself under a run of power lines. When I got there, no one appeared to be home. But that's how Sonny's house always looked. I have no clue how the dude gets around whenever he actually convinces himself to leave the house. Except this time, of course. When I actually needed to talk to him, he really wasn't there. It wasn't like I could just ring him up either. Sonny doesn't own a phone. Not a landline, not a cell phone, no car either. I literally have no idea how he survives. Probably an apocalypse bunker full of canned soup. After some of the stuff I've seen, that's the last thing that would surprise me right now. Anyway, so I banged on the door, careful to use my non-dominant hand so I didn't jar my healing finger. Paint popped off under my knuckles and a squirrel rustled sullenly in the yard. Place was dead. All barren grass and weeds and crooked shutters clacking morosely in the winter wind. It wasn't much of a wind but it was still damn cold and I wasn't wearing a jacket. I know it's stupid, but I have this thing against jackets. Sonny? I shouted. A crow coughed angrily. I scuffed my boot on the doorstep, kicking a pile of soot. Fine, if Sonny wanted to ghost me, then he was going to pay for it. I was only going to get more shouty later. See, my anger has a tendency to simmer up rather than down and the dude owed me an explanation for that terrible job referral. Annoyed, I walked around back just in case, like I expected him to be chilling at a glass garden table, feet up, sipping a lemonade or whatever. I just really wanted him to be there so I could shake some answers out of him. There was no garden or garden table back there behind the house, just a couple of bald tires and an encroaching tree line. I turned away, resigned, and finally ready to go home. Then, I heard it. Soft. Just a whimper, but distinctly, a baby's cry. I rubbed my eyes, which obviously did nothing for my hearing. But I was tired as a three-year-old advertisement and my senses were hooked up crooked in my brain. Someone once told me that coyotes can sound like babies when they're trying to lure you in. No idea if that's true. No idea why they'd be lurking around Sonny's backyard in broad daylight. No idea why I even fixated on this tangent. I took another step, and again, a quiet cry. Longer this time. Burbling just behind me to the left. The trees were so far up the ass of Sonny's house that they created this heavy canopy, towering over me, bending arms, dropping shadows like an invasion. My skin started to get prickly, and my brain started to go, oh god, not again. 
I was past the point of explaining away the things I'd seen around town, so I should have known better. Again, the baby cry, plaintive, mewling and helpless. If there was any chance at all there was an actual child in there, now was the time to take an opportunity to not be a garbage human just once, right? That noble thought didn't make me any less hesitant as I towed my way further under the tree's shadows. The crying picked up like the baby could hear me, and just as my feet touched the first lumpy roots of the woods, it stopped. Cut off. I peered around nervously. It really was dark back there. When I looked over my shoulder, I could barely discern Sonny's house in the gloom. Something rustled, and I whipped my attention back to the woods. Just haphazard rows of smooth trunks, impossibly tall trees. Their branches started at a height that seemed higher than Sonny's roof. Another rustle and a cry, louder, closer, just at my feet. I crouched and squinted. The forest floor was dirty and leaves and curled up dead ferns and stripped twigs and something that looked like a chewed off squirrel's tail. And there, a hand, small and grasping and chubby, poking out of the leaf litter like a mouth widening for air. God, I said, stunned and sickened. Hang on, just hang on. I scrambled, swiping dirt and forest mold. A deep, deep anger burning up from the pit of my stomach. Talk about human garbage. There was a child here, a baby suffocating in the dirt. I didn't have time to process the fact that this was happening in my friend's backyard. I uncovered more of the arm, skin soft as grave dirt. It waved limply, pale, near translucent and full of veins. Was it safe to try pull the whole kid out? I don't know. I didn't want to hurt it, but I was panicking, feeling weirdly like a grave robber, like a whole angry atmosphere had just crashed into my back. My hands were filthy now, soil crusted under my nails. I dug out another scoopful of earth, and there was part of the baby's face. Its eyes were closed. There was something spidery, a ligament of some kind on the side of its head. I reached in, trying to cradle the baby in my hands, and gently pulled it out. But, I couldn't. That thing on the side of its head was a root, and as the dirt fell away, I saw it extended all the way up its skull and sank into the flesh like a stem. The baby opened its eyes, blood red, just red, no whites, no blacks, and screamed. That's when the forest woke up. Wood groaned, leaves hissed, clumps on the forest floor I'd taken to just be leaves and dirt shuddered and began to travel, burrowing along, close to the surface in a trembling, advancing spearhead. The trees moved with them, dragged, reluctant ambulatory carriages. They raised their roots and followed their masters. Another plump hand broke through the dirt, and another, reaching for me as the tide of earth came towards my shoes. The strange child I held bared its three rows of needle teeth and sank them into my hand. I swore, I shouted, I said a lot of things strung together that didn't make sense before I dropped the thing and ran. Stumbling backward, my elbows bounced off the bark that was suddenly behind me, blocking my exit, totally obscuring Sonny's house. The trees had shifted, creeping in behind me, moved by their malevolent root children. More hands erupted from the leaf mold and red eyes glinted in the dark. My hands stung. It stung bad. Hell, it hurt worse than my still healing finger and had already turned a nasty reddish purple. The mottled stain took up about half of my hand and had begun to swell. My head careened with heedless panic and I ran in the only direction I could, deeper into the woods. For a long time, I could hear the thump and sliver of things through the ground, trees brushing against trees, making their chase undeterred. Surely I was easy quarry, fuzzy with adrenaline and unfamiliar with territory, my hand pulsed with agony and my vision with blackouts. I tripped numerous times, 
each fall a century as I imagine those sharp monster teeth around my ankles. But the little buggers never caught me. Maybe they could only move so fast, dragging their trees, or maybe they were herding me into a place I couldn't escape. Honestly, at this point, I didn't care. I didn't have the wherewithal to think of any of it. I blundered on until I was thoroughly lost, and the woods was close, and the air hung cold and sharp, and my shirt was ripped and torn along with the skin underneath. Pausing finally, I shivered, each direction looking the same, the same quiet, waiting dark, the same smooth, two tall trees, the same glitter of red eyes behind rocks and bushes, until I looked right at them and they vanished. The woods around Sonny's house weren't this deep. By now, I should have been through to another neighborhood or something, but there was only green shadows, whispering bark, the sweet moldering smell of decay. Oh God, I was lost. I was so so lost. Put running on no sleep and possibly infection in my hand together, and I was so damn far from a mental zen garden. I cursed Sonny to the ends of the earth. If I ever saw him again, I'd… well, I might cry at first at the recovery of civilization, and then, oh then. My anger warmed me just a little bit, just enough to start walking again, shivering in shirt sleeveless and goosebumped skin. I tried to tuck my hands under my armpits for extra heat, but my right hand screamed with pain. When I looked at it, it was shiny and melty looking, an uncomfortable black itching around my cuticles. I swayed and hit the dirt, a half-revealed rock jutting into my kidneys. And as I lay there, stunned, a numb paralysis scurrying at my leg in tingling waves, I thought, with a brief heart skip of horror, I felt a small, baby soft hand brush my cheek. When I woke up, I was in bed. My bed. My blankets were tickling my chin, all stuffed at one side by the wall. I slapped them away and jolted upright. Everything appeared uncannily normal, sun winding through the room, bright white with late winter morning, the room chilly and smelling faintly of pizza. I even wore my pyjamas a rumpled ACDC tea and flannel bottoms. The copper taste of nightmares hung beyond my tongue, but maybe that's really all it had been. I yawned, mouth dry and sticky, and slumped my way to the bathroom where the mirror showed me my face and arms, thrashed by branches in so many fine red lines. And my hand, swollen to the size of a baseball mitt and faded from blotchy red to muddy brown. I felt like I was hovering over myself, distant with alarm as I tried to bend my fingers. They were stiff and the joints groaned, almost like a bent tree in the winter wind. <laughs>